FlossTube, it's Jen from Jen Stitching Itch. I'm back for an update video. Today is Sunday, May 2nd, and yes, this is my first video of 2021. It's been a crazy semester. Um, I've been working from home, but I have had um, meetings on campus this semester, and so that's taken some time. But honestly, I've been very selfish this semester. I've spent a lot of time in my craft room over the past month, month and a half, and I've spent time out in my garden and um, just enjoying some solitude, I guess. It has been a quick semester. We're actually finished. I have like 20 papers left to re um, review. Half of those are resubmissions, so they should be in pretty good um, order. Plus, these are all pre-med students that are in their junior, senior year and still are feel confident that they're going to med school, so they should be really well written, you would think. Um, but so far, so good. So that's about all I have to do. I have one student that's doing some exam retakes because of academic integrity issues. It's a tough semester. I have to remind myself and my colleagues, we were talking about this, that these students are under stress in normal circumstances. They've been under stress even more and in an environment that makes it easier to kind of look things up. And so people make stupid decisions especially students that are under the age of 22 when their brains aren't fully developed. That's what I keep telling myself. Their brains aren't fully developed and they make bad decisions. And though they should be held accountable, I also want to give them the benefit of the doubt. So I let students do retakes at the end of the semester because if they really know it, they'll know it. And um, we'll see. Um, it's always an interesting semester. So that's been, that's what I have to look forward to next week. And I'm finished raising children officially now because my younger son graduates with his bachelor's on Thursday. So I'm so proud of him. Both of my sons graduated in four years with their undergraduate degree, which is a big deal now. Um, my kids are great. I'm very fortunate. I've had zero problems with my kids. They are just have been very um, mature and uh, just good, good people in general. You know, they're just easy to raise. They've made life a lot easier for me. Actually, they're great because they help with so many things. So I've, I'll take credit for it, though. I think that there's something innate about good people. So <laughs> they're just... I'll say it again. I've got some great kids. So Nicholas graduates on Thursday and both of them are in graduate school at this point. So Patrick has finished his first semester of a master's in library science, library information science, and he loves it. He's done really, really well. I think he's found his niche. And then um, Nicholas will start in August in human capital development, um, working on a master's there. And Javi's thinking about doing a master's degree as well. And um, I think he's supposed to start in August as well. It's vir it's a digital, no, not the digital. It's called, it's all online. And so um, I'll have three guys in graduate school at the same time. But I'm only paying for one of them. The other two have to pay their own way. So um, they're both still at home. And honestly, I don't see a reason for them to try to go and rent an apartment right now. Nicholas, that's kind of his idea. He's very pragmatic. He's like, I'm just going to stay here until, you know, I've got a job that pays well enough that I can afford to live on my own and just keep piling up the money because he's paying for his graduate school. I'm like, that's fine because he cleans up. He does all the grilling. He's our grill master. Um, he also helps me with my Etsy shop. And so I, I'm fine with that. Um, they do their own laundry. They clean up their own rooms. They clean up after themselves. So I'm fine with it. And then Patrick really wants to move. He wants to move out of Mississippi, but he's also very rational, understanding that he's got to find a job that's going to pay because he he's also very, um, what do you say? He does not want to spend his money. Uh, he watches his money very closely and he's very aware of how quickly it can disappear. So he doesn't want to spend all of his money. So, and again, he does all the kitchen cleaning. He washes his own clothes. Sometimes he takes care of our clothes. What am I going to complain about? And Patrick cleans the litter boxes. So I'm not complaining. Um, and they're not here that often. 
they're usually gone. So I'm by myself like a little stitching lady. So, all right, so that's my, my life update. We um, have quite a bit of stitching to look at. So what my plans are, instead of trying to go through, because I have FOs, FFOs, in progress, plans, everything. I'm just going to kind of start from January and work my way through of kind of starts and finishes. Um, my last video, I went over my whips and I had something like 38. And I finished some of those, but I have been starting new stuff and lots of smalls. Thanks to Priscilla and Chelsea with the tid, uh, tier trade tidbits. I've loved those. I have been obsessed with those and I've stitched quite a bit of them. And so I'll share those with you. So let's just get started with my 2021 progress. Okay, so starting in January, I actually, my first finished in, in January was a start from December of 2020. It was um, Jolly Happy Soul from Brenda Gervais. And I know it's hard to see on this fabric, but there are a bunch of snowflakes. But I love this. I just think it's very cute. Um, now, a lot of people call this one Frosty, but it is called Jolly Happy Soul. And those um, cardinals are over one. Isn't that cute? So I'll finish this as a pillow. But so I started that on in December. What was that? December 5th, I think. Something like that. 15th. And I finished it on finished it on January 2nd. My first start of January of 2021 was the January mini sampler from From the Heart Needle Art. And I'm doing this series, though I'm behind now because I did not do April. And I'm stitching these on 40 count and I'm using the Call 4 threads. She uses classic color works and general arts primarily, but if I don't have it, I just substitute something from Victoria Motto. And I have an idea of how I'm going to use these, but I'm not quite sure if it's going to work. Maybe by my next, maybe by June, I'll have this in an FFO form. So I started that on January 1st. I finished that one on January 14th. All right, my next start was Holiday Hoopla by Brenda Gervais. I started it on... Um, January 4th and I finished it on January 8th and then I FFO'd it. Isn't that adorable? She is so cute. So I'm using the count that's called for but I just substitute. I have a basket in my craft room that has little small cuts of linen and I just pull something out of there. So that is my FFO of that. I may put a bow on it. Probably. So cute. All right, then I worked on Heartstring Samplery, V is for Valentine, and I went ahead and if you've seen the chart, she has these, she has a, an alphabet series, and then she has them framed in the same type of frame, just different colors. So you can get this on signed and numbered on Etsy. So I ordered it and I finished and FFO'd V is for Valentine. I love this. I think I displayed it from the day I finished it until like the 1st of March. And then now I have it in, displayed in my craft room. But it is so cute. So V is for Valentine by Heartstring Samplery. This is stitched on a 32 count linen. I started it on January 8th and I finished it on January 15th. I'm sitting at my dining room table I cleaned it completely off so I could just pile all my stitching stuff on here. Okay, fourth was, or the next was the 2020 Collector's Heart from Heart and Hand. So the, she releases a Collector's Heart every year. Um, I've got some of them. I think I've started collecting them two years ago. And um, last year's, there was two parts to it. So when you order, when you get the kit, it comes with everything. So this is the first part. What is that? Cat hair, probably. And then this is the second part. And the thing is, is she sent enough linen that you could do this twice. So I'm gonna finish it 
as described. And if there's enough left over, I'm just giving it to my sister so she can stitch on. So that's the 2020 Collector's Heart from Heart and Hand. It's on 32 count Legacy Linen. And I think this is, um, I forget what that's called. I don't remember. But I started these on the 11th of January and finished them on the 18th of January. Okay, then my next start was Oh Joyous Day by Blackbird Design. So it's the big sampler everybody started on Inauguration Day. So I did not, when I first saw that chart at market, my first thing was I'm going to do bands and make it into a drum. So I did that. I did the top band and then I took the bird in the middle section and stitched it. So here's the bird. Oh, how do I orient this? And then the band, let me find the beginning. I just stitched it. Now the phrase is from the inaugural poem, which was amazing. So I just took a phrase out of it that I th that was very important to me and I just stitched that. So it's the past we step into and how we repair it. Just think that speaks volumes. And then the, on the top, my whole soul is in it. That is from J um, President Biden's address. And he repeated that quite a bit. And I thought that was very important. So JBKH, so Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, 2021. So very, I love this. It's not the best finishing. I got really excited when I was doing it. And that's okay. It's not perfect. But this made me very happy. So that was my finish. I started that on Inauguration Day on the 20th. And I finished it on the 30th of January. All right. Then I started a chart. This is from the Scattered Seeds Sampling series from last year it's called skeptical gathering so these are kits she sends she's doing it again this year and i signed up for it but i didn't stitch anything from last year so that's my plans is to work through the 2020 series this year and that's my progress which there's not a lot left because i've got the the hardest parts done i just have those birds and all of the little doodads around there so very pretty and it comes with all the finishing to make you know to finish this to ffo it so notice you know at this point one two three four five this was my sixth start of um 2021 and it's the only one so far that i haven't finished it's not the only one but it's the only one so far i haven't finished so i started that on january 21st all right in, on January 23rd, I started the February monthly sampler from Country Cottage Needleworks. And it's not my favorite stitched piece. It'll be pretty when I finish it, but that February doesn't show up. And I may just stitch, uh, pull that out and stitch it in the light pink. Or maybe I'll stitch it in the green. I don't know. What do you think? Light pink or green? But I started this on... January 23rd and I finished it on February 10th and this is on 40 count blush from Silk Weaver. Okay. Now for my February progress. February was very productive. I stitched quite a bit, started a lot of things, but finished a lot of them as well. So my first start in February of 2021 was a start and finish this is um, Holiday Hoopla by Brenda Gervais, Holiday Hoopla, St. Patrick's Day. And I stitched it on the called for count, but probably not the called for linen, and used mainly the called for threads. So it is really cute. I started this on February 1st and finished it on February 5th. On February 2nd, I started the February mini sampler from From the Heart Needle Art, and I finished it on the 10th. It's stitched on a 40 count linen, 
using mainly the call for the love is actually a um limited edition thread that was in a pack from gentle arts i can't remember the name maybe i don't remember the name next up is that was the beginning of my obsession so in february um, Priscilla and Chelsea, Stitching with the Housewives, started a new series called Tear Tray Tidbits. And I'm obsessed with them. I love them. They're mainly because they have little bunnies and little carrots on them, which I love bunnies and I love carrots. I have a collection of ragdoll bunnies and I have a collection of decorative carrots. I started years ago with these wooden carrots and then Teresa bought me this velveteen carrot and then I made some carrots, it's ridiculous, but I like carrots for decoration. And so the first one in this series was the carrot seed. Now, all of these that you'll see that are on the dark blackish colored fabric are, this is 36 count gunmetal from Weeks Dye Works. I started this on the 5th of February and finished it on the 7th because I'm obsessed and you'll see my plans I've already FFO'd one of these that I stitched later and you'll see what that looks like I think it's a good idea it's a prototype I've still got to work on some details next up was a Lizzie Kate this is called celebrate with charm love I started this on the 8th of February and finished it on the 9th and I know it's really close here, but it's going to be on a pillow, so I've got plenty of room. This is stitched on a piece of 32 count cinnabar linen from Silk Weaver. It was a scrap that I had. It's a pretty color. And then another Valentine piece that I've stitched in February was the Love Whirly Gig, or excuse me, Valentine Whirly Gig by Heart and Hand. So this will finish as a little disc that sits in a ceramic dish. And I've got the ceramic dish. So it's on a 32 count linen from my scrap basket. I started that on the 8th and finished that on the 10th. Oops, something's touching my face. I've got a hair. Did you see it? I saw it in the screen there. Okay. Love my 24 hours of cross stitch planner. Next up was, um, come. let's see, what is it? Sweet Summer Come Again by Blackbird Design. This was released last year and I just think it's so pretty. I stitched it on a piece of 30, 36 count Purely Primitive from um, Silk Weaver, I believe. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Started it on the 8th and finished it on the 12th. And using the call for threads so this will be a little pin pillow and then the thing that I think is a most adorable is this pin drum because it's going to be tiny isn't that pretty and we're back to the tear tray tidbits so this was is carrot patch on 36 count gunmetal I started it on the 12th and finished it on the 13th I'm obsessed with these they're so adorable On the um, 13th, I stitched Bunny Bakery. This is a, was a release from Stitching with the Housewives. And it's so cute. And I have started the FFO process because I went and bought this piece from Hobby Lobby. Now, Priscilla and Chelsea, they stitched their uh, models on 28 count Monaco. And so this is 36 count, so it's smaller, but this fits on the sugar canister in that same series. So it'll be really cute. I've just got to work on it because it's, I hot glued the magnets on there and it's not sticking very well. When I tried to pull it off, it broke, not broke. It just, it um, came apart. So isn't that cute? I had a really big slub in the fabric, but I still think it's adorable. I'm probably not going to add too much more to this. I'm kind of a plain Jane kind of girl, and so I like the way that looks. Okay, 
So that was Bunny Bakery. I started it on the 13th and finished that on the 17th. Obsessed. On the 18th, I started the monthly sampler march from Country Cottage Needleworks and finished that on the 24th. This is on a piece of 40 count linen. It's Iris by, who is this? Fabrics by Stephanie. I think this was part of a, I was in her fabric of the month club for a while. And another tiered tray tidbit. This is Frilly Cabbage Seeds, or just Cabbage Seeds, I think, from Stitching with the Housewives on 36 count gunmetal. I started this on the 17th and finished it on the 24th. And then I started Thomas by Not Forgotten Farm, which I love this. And the way that I'm stitching this was inspired by Tangela, who I met at a retreat years ago. She's one of our stitching buddies now, even though I haven't seen her in over a year. I miss you, Tangie. Um, but this is a really cute piece. But the way she did it, I would have never thought of this. She stitched it on 18 count linen over two threads, so making it nine count. So it's huge. And then she made it into the cutest pillow and so I'm like, I'm copying you. And so I finally started it, but that's as far as I've gotten. So not very much progress. Because I've been obsessively stitching bunnies and carrots from Priscilla and Chelsea. And then the last February piece was another one of these little seed packs. So this is Radish Seeds. I started it on the 25th and finished it on the 28th. All right, so March progress. March was not as productive as February because the semester started getting a little crazy. We were having issues with students not wanting to um, do work when they thought they should be on spring break, even though we didn't have a spring break and we had administration that didn't want to upset the students and tried to change the kind of rules mid-semester as to what faculty could do during the Friday day off they were supposed to have. They tried to, the students wanted to extend it through from Thursday through Monday. Faculty had made schedules at, back in January and were not made aware of this change. It was just a big mess. My students had an exam due that Thursday and some said something to me. I said, well, you it opened on Wednesday. If you don't want to do it on Thursday, yours is due on Wednesday no discussion. So I didn't have any issues. Other faculty did. So it was just real stressful. Things were going on textbook wise. So I didn't get as much stitching done. And I also did not catalog as well. I didn't write down dates and things. So this isn't going to be as organized as my February stitching. So let's get back to stitching. So first up in March was another of the tiered tray tidbits. This is the Xenia Seeds. So I switched fabric at this point. This is 40 count um, gray sand from XG Design. And I love this linen. It is beautiful, beautiful. And I think it looks like an old piece of paper. So it looks like an old seed pack, which is, you'll see in my finishing idea in just a minute what I'm going to do with these. So that was my first start in, in March. I started on the 1st and I finished it on the 5th. Next up was a start, no finish. This is from Scattered Seed Samplers, the Remember Me Pin Keep. So this was a part of her club last year. She is starting to release these as charts now, so um, you may be able to find this. This is Remember Me Pin Keep, and that's as far as I have stitched. It's on a piece of 36 count vintage country mocha. And it's cute, but you know, I'm obsessed with the tidbits. Um, I started that on the 10th. On the 11th, I started Daisy Seeds, which I can't. There it is right there. I've recorded this part multiple times. I either forget to hit the record button or my computer shuts down. So this is Daisy Seeds. And this is what I want to do. I love the way this looks like an old seed pack. So I want to finish it as a seed pack. And my first thought was that I wasn't going to stitch, uh, stuff it. I was just going to make it a little flat piece with a pocket. And I had an idea 
that I wanted to get little gardening tools in the miniature section and I found some. I either found these in the miniature section or the fairy garden section at Hobby Lobby and just have them sit in the little pocket like that but they fall down in it so I think the rest of them I'm just going to stuff because if I stuff this in the pocket like so then I can put these in here and they sit up better. Isn't that cute? And then they sit on my tiered tray. So I do have a tiered tray. I got this from 1803 Ohio Farm Basket. Thanks to Michelle Rudy, who influences me on my spending quite a bit, quite often. And I'll have them in here. So these are actually from Wolf Studio. It's a family um, artist studio. Um, it's B.B. Wolf, her mother, I think it was her mother and father before her had the studio. But she does these different ceramics and they're just beautiful. So every year I get bunnies. And then also at Christmas she does some type of bird. So these are her limited edition bunnies this year because they're gray. They will stay out all year round. So that's my tiered tray for my tiered tray tidbits. I jumped on that wagon. All right, and next up was Celebrate with Charm St. Patrick's Day from Lizzie Kate. This is on a piece of 32 count scrap linen. It's silk weaver, I just don't know what type. I started this on the 14th and finished it on the 17th. Let's see. Then I started the Little Shamrocks from um, Pineberry Lane, whom I love her designs. And I started this one. Um, this was started on the 15th, but I haven't done any very much to it. And this is on that 40 count gray sand from X2 Design. I love this linen. It is perfect for prim stuff. So. That's my progress on Little Shamrocks. On the 16th, I started the March Mini Sampler from, from the Heart Needle Art. And I finished it on the 19th. On um, another project that I started in March and finished, but I don't remember the dates, was a um, pin cushion. It's actually a Biscornu. I'm in the great Biscornu swap group on Facebook, and I joined the Biscornu swap for um, the beginning of 2021, and I've completed and sent that to my partner, and I'll insert a picture here. This is from Sub Rosa, who's on Etsy, and she has great prim style if you want to look at her stuff, and this was the patriotic pin cushion, and I just converted it to a Biscornu. And then I'll also insert a picture of the Biscornu that I received from my partner, so, which is beautiful, a lot more detail, and she stitched both sides. But I love the Patriotic Pincushion one. I'm like, oh, I don't want to send this one off. So, um, so that was another start and finish. And then this is where I lost kind of my cataloging because I didn't write some of these down. So I also started and finished Spring String from Lizzie Kate. This is a piece of Caloris from um, Under the Seat Fabric. I think it's 36 count. Yeah, it's 36 count. I think this is beautiful. I started it on the 7th and finished it on the 11th. And then another one is another tidbit, a tear trade tidbit. This is Bunny Parade. So I, I'm not sure when I started and finished this. I don't have it in my records because I just got crazy with stitching bunnies and didn't even keep up with it. And then finally, my last start in March was Scarlet by Stacy Nash Primitives. I started her on March 23rd and finished her April 13th. And I adapted her because I have a, sorry, I have a um, Boston Terrier named Sally. And I'll put a picture in here. 
So I changed her blaze and her little paws to look like Sally's. And I'm a crazy pet owner because I also found on Etsy a little dog, a dog dress that I can make her, make Sally a dress that looks like that and then dress her up with her pillow. Sally doesn't want to do that. She thinks I'm crazy and said, stop it, Jennifer, stop it. So I don't know if I'll make the dress, but I do have the pattern. Oh, I do have one other March start and finish. I started spring gatherings, um, spring gatherings by scattered seed. I started this on the 20th and finished it on the 23rd and just used some fabric and lady dot palm to FFO it. And it sat in my little tiered tray during Easter. Cause you know, let's look at that again. So cute. All right, so that's March 2021. All right, so now we're to April and, you know, catching up with the year. It's been a while since my last video. In April, I was not as productive cross-stitch-wise as I have had been in February or even March. So I don't have a lot to show you, but I do have a lot to talk about because I didn't stitch on a lot of things, but what I did stitch on some of them I finished. So my first um, project that I started in April was More Chocolate Bunnies by Hands on the Design. And I love this thing. I've been wanting to stitch it. And I got this far. This is a 32 count linen. I don't know what it is. It may be Velt from Picture This Plus, but it didn't have a label on it. So that's as far as I got. That, that didn't do very much. I am using the Sulky Thread Pack to stitch that. And hopefully I'll get more work on that. Oops. Make sure I get all the parts in there. So I started that on the 1st. Haven't finished it. And then on the 3rd, I started Rabbit Patch by hand, um, Heart and Hand. And again, I didn't get very far. That's as far as I've gotten. Because I kind of got obsessed with quilting at this point. So um, I'm not going to talk about my quilting right now. I'll talk about it later. But then I worked a lot on quilting and on um, some FFOing of last year's finishes. So give me just a second and I'll show you. But I'm not going to talk about them in this video. I'll just show you a teaser. So I spent a weekend finishing and I'm going to do an FFO, um, my finish parade from last year. And I'll save that. So that was my um, tease for you. And then I decided I needed to finish up some Stitch Mania pieces because Mania was starting May 1st and I did not want to have some of these things hanging around. So I started focusing on one project and working on that project solely until I completed it. So I have four finishes to show from April. First is Strawberry Stitches. This is uh, Jeanette Douglas and I bought the thread pack that comes with it and this has a lot of specialty stitches. You use a lot of specialty threads and it's really fun. I love doing these. And you may remember when I was bragging about my over one strawberries. But I've got it completed and it fits into an 8 by 10 frame. I just need to go pick out a frame and get that framed. And I have a place in my kitchen that I have all, let's see, one, two, three, four, five of them that I'm done. And there's a spot perfectly for strawberry stitches right, right over there. If you could see it, you'd agree. All right. Then I worked on... The Pumpkin King Nutcracker. This was a Mania start last year. It's a Satsuma Street ornament. Oops, you see the back. It's still not okay. So I finished him and FFO'd him. Isn't he cute and sparkly? And let me... I think that's it for April. No. No, it's not, Jennifer. Today's the 2nd of May. You finished these last week. Just time is passing. So then I worked on Spring in Baltimore. I started this in May 1st of 2018. 
and I finished this on the 23rd, the first day of 24 hours of cross stitch. So I did participate in the last 24 hours of cross stitch and I just stitched on these charts that I'm showing you until they were done. So I worked on 24, I mean on a spring in Baltimore. So pretty. I'm going to frame this one in a really pretty frame. And then I finished playing with jacks. Now, some people are like, you haven't finished that. This is from Cricut Collection. And in the original, it has this little border thing and then this little check around. And I don't like the thing down here. It has these um, leaves that almost make it look more southwestern, especially with all of this. So I didn't want to do that part. And then I'm like, well, if I don't have that, why would I put the little series of, you know, X's around here? So that's it. I'm done. And I'm going to finish this as a pillow. So that was a mania start in 2019. I was stitching it with Lisha, who almost finished it. I think she's probably finished by now. She came over and stitched with me last Saturday during the 24 hours of cross stitch. And then I was also stitching this with EJ. And yes, EJ, I was watching um, your video when I finished this. So it's so pretty. So that is almost done. I have one more thing to show you, but I've got to pause and get it. Okay, so my last cross stitch finish to share with you is um, one that I have been working on for a long time. So I did my first stitch mania in 2016 and um, I have one piece that I have worked on every year in stitch mania since then. And if you recall from my whip parade, I swore that I was going to finish this before mania of 2021. And that is the Brooks Books Spirit of Oz Santa. I picked this out because my son, when he was in high school, Nicholas, was in a production of The Wizard of Oz. And I decided this would be great. I could stitch this for him. And this could be kind of remind him of the time he was in The Wizard of Oz. So I started it and I've worked on it and worked on it and worked on it and I have yet to finish it. Well, last Monday, I decided that's the only thing I'm going to stitch on this week. I'm going to finish it before May. And I did. I stayed up till midnight on the 30th of April and FFO'd it. So it's in a shadow box that I got from Hobby Lobby. And it is, it's crowded and kind of chaotic, but I think it's beautiful. And I'm going to take it out because it, these shadow boxes, I got the shadow box at Hobby Lobby. It's $18. And then I got it 50% off, so not expensive. And the backing is what I used. I just went and got a piece of um, scrapbook paper and glued it to the backing. And then I glued the pieces, the cross stitch pieces to it. So it's real easy to assemble into the frame and real easy to take out. So here it is. So it's all these different parts with lots of Krynic the chenille stuff here, fuzzies, some of that memory thread, and it is just amazing. Here's my favorite right here, that little lion and that scarecrow, Dorothy and Toto, the Tin Man and the Witch with her little broom. It was actually a lot of fun. So it is finished. And it freed up a lot on Stitch Mania, which I'm going to talk about next. So now it's May and it's time for Stitch Mania. And I've participated in Stitch Mania since 2016. Um, and I wasn't sure if I was going to do it this year because I'm really into my quilting, which I'll talk about later. And I'm like, I've got a lot of starts. Maybe I just won't do Stitch Mania just be a grown-up about it. And then I'm like, no, I like Stitch Mania and I'm going to do Stitch Mania. It doesn't matter how many whips I have. I'm getting things done. I have finishes and FFOs. I'm just going to enjoy myself. So I'm fully participating in Stitch Mania again this year. And I always do what's called the Blimey Cat Method, which means that um, this is based on Ingleside Imaginarium. She came up with the idea 
years ago where you stitch on old mania whips on the day that you started them and then if you finished you get to start a new project so that's the way I've been doing it since 2017 and it works so because I finished so many of my mania starts from previous years I have a lot of space for new starts because I'm doing the full 31 days so I'm going to share with you my plans for the first eight days of stitch mania so yesterday was May 1st and my first mania start was Ida May Crow by the Good Housewife. Now she re-released these charts a few years ago through her Etsy shop so I was able to get them. I'm not sure if they're still available. And it calls for, what is it, 35 count straw. I'm stitching mine on a piece of 36 count and I'm not sure, I think this is a Victorian motto from the Victorian Motto Club. Yeah, that's what it's from. So it doesn't have a name. But it reminds me of Plum Street Blend from r and And I stitched on it for quite a while. I'm re-watching the um, Blacklist. So I'm up to season three right now. Love Blacklist. So this is what I'm stitching on. So this will always remind me of Raymond Reddington. My sister, younger sister, and I both love Blacklist. And so I'm texting her like really great Raymond Reddington quotes. Yesterday, I, um, what was the quote that I sent her? She's out camping because she's a scoutmaster. And um, she's having to do all this training. So she's stitching in the woods. No, she's sleeping in the woods. I'm stitching at home. I got distracted. So yesterday's quote that I sent to her, it says, give my regards to Chi Chi. Thought that was hilarious. Okay, so so I, I, Ida May Crow was May 1st. So Ira Ray Crow will be my May 2nd start on the same linen, almost exactly the same fabric. I mean, the same threads. Now, I, this calls for NPI. And instead of using NPI, I'm using Victoria Motto. Um, flosses. So I pulled the DMC suggestion and I just matched it to my stash of um, Victoria Motto. And I think it looks great. So I will work on him this evening. May 3rd will be Farm Fresh from Hands on Design. I'm just going to stitch it on a piece of scrap 32 count using the call for threads. May 4th is another of the um, club series from Scattered Seed Samplers from last year out on the limb. So I will start that. And again, it comes perfectly packaged with everything. It's probably why I didn't start them because I didn't want to open it. No, too many things going on. May 5th, because I finished, everybody should see him again, because I finished this. On the 30th, I have an opening on May 5th now, and I will start the May mini sampler from, from the heart. I'll stitch it on a piece of 40 count scrap fabric, and I'll probably change the colors on this. I'm not too keen on that color for May. And then on um, the 6th, 7th, and 8th, I'm working on a series from Hands On Design, and I thought the series was cute, but I didn't want to stitch it until I saw Kellyanne finish and I'll post the uh, link to the video if I can find it. It is absolutely adorable and I'm going to finish mine like hers but it's the laundry series from Hands On Design. So the first one I will start on the 6th is Loads of Fun and then on the 7th I will do the Never Ending Cycle and on the 8th I will do the third part of the series which is Irony which I have on order. I'm stitching it on a piece of 36 count fog lifter from R&R. &R. So I've got all three pieces cut, ready to go. And I am changing the color. So this is cute, but the teal is not the color that matches my house. So I'm changing the teals to these more um, earth tone greens. I'm using the 4045 and 320 in place of the teals but everything else is the same you know that color gold's going to be fine and then it's just gray 37.99 and 38.65 so not a lot of variation there but i'm just changing the greens up so 
So those are my plans for the first eight days of Stitch Mania 2021. And the only reason I'm only showing you these is because my plan is to start doing my videos again on a regular basis. So I hope to have these videos posted every Sunday. Um, now that's all of my cross stitching and I do want to share some of my quilting, but I'm going to do that after this. So if you're not interested in quilting, you don't have to hang around. Um, but I do want to um, name the winners from my giveaway last time. So I had two charts that I was giving away last time. And the first was the Rarest Flower by uh, Blackbird Design. It's part of their Garden Club series. And the winner of that is Return to Fire Tower. So if you can email me at jlreagan at bellsouth.net and send me your address, I will get that chart to you. And then the winner of the winter snow chart is Stacy Lutter. So again, if you can email me at jlreagan at bellsouth.net and send me your address, I will get that chart out to you. Now, I do have a giveaway for this um, video. And again, what I'm doing with my giveaways is that I have these charts that come in from my distributor and sometimes they come in damaged. And not horribly damaged, they're just bent. And, um, you know, I can't sell them. And so I'm doing those as giveaways. And my giveaway this time is Midnight Watch by Blackbird Design. And if I can find the charts, oh, there they are. So it's Midnight Watch by Blackbird Design. Isn't that adorable? I stitched this, I have it hanging in my craft room. But it was in the box, and I don't know if you can see this, but it has a pretty good dent in it. Yeah, you can see it right there. And all five of them were damaged that way. So, five chances to win Midnight Watch. If you are interested in, the, in winning this, just in your comment, mention Midnight, and I will draw a winner or five winners for the next video. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. So, um, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm mentioning the names in my videos. I'm not going to comment on other people's comments because that gets too distracting and I really don't have time to go through all those comments and do it. Um, so you just have to listen to my next video to find out if you're a winner. And if you are, you just email me and I'll send these charts to you or send you your chart. Um, international is fine because I can send these in a flat you know, it's not that expensive. It's just going to be regular post. Um, there's not going to be priority or anything like that. Last time I had the Eleanor Rigby and I sent out to people who had won and some of them were returned to me. So I'm just going to do a redraw on those. Um, one of those was an international. It made it all the way to the address that was given and then was refused at the address and sent back to me. So um, you know, I'm not going to chase down winners, kind of like Michelle Bendy. Uh, so if you're interested, say midnight in the comments and then watch my next video to see if you're a winner. Um, so that's Midnight Watch. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch gears and talk about some of my other crafting. So if you're not interested in anything but cross stitch, thank you for joining me. Thank you for um, being patient and waiting for me to return. Um, it's just been crazy. I have been watching Floss Tube every day. Uh, I've also been watching Body Language Panel, which is my new obsession. I keep telling my students I'm training body to be able to read people's body language. So that's been another obsession. Anyway, that has nothing to do with cross stitch. So thank you if you um, have stuck through this video this long. I hope to see you soon and um, have fun with Stitch Mania. Okay, so now for those of you that are interested in quilting, I'm going to talk a little bit about my quilting progress over the past few months because I've gotten quite a bit done. Um, a lot of what I want to show you I'm going to have to do in pictures because I've sent everything to the quilter. So I like piecing quilts. I don't like quilting the quilts. I've looked at maybe getting a long arm and then I'm like, no, Jennifer, you don't like doing that. I like the piecing part. So about a year ago, I signed up for the um, Farm Girl Vintage Block of the Month through Stitcher, Stitch in Haven, Stitch in Heaven in Texas. So this is their logo. 
right there. Stitch in Haven. Can't even say. Stitch in Heaven month. So I'm in there. I finished the Farm Girl Vintage 1. And I'll talk about that in just a second. I signed up for the Farm Girl Vintage 2 and the Farm Girl Christmas or the Vintage Christmas Block of the Months through them. And then I've also signed up for one more, I believe. I don't know. I got a little obsessed and I'm in several Block of the Month clubs. But the way they have it set up is that they kind of stagger. So you're not getting all of them at the same time. So right now I'm getting the Farm Girl Vintage 2 and the Vintage Christmas. Both of those are Lori Holt quilts and they are amazing. So if you have not quilted and you're interested in piecing, um, those her books are wonderful because she gives you very clear instructions. And if you follow her instructions, your corners and everything line up really well. So I love Lori Holt's quilts. Um, my first exciting news is that I finished the Farm Girl Vintage One quilt. It's a sampler quilt, so each block is different. And I'll insert a picture here of that finished piece. And I am so proud of this. It is at the quilter right now, so hopefully I will get it back in just a few weeks. But this is um, from that block of the month through Stitching Heaven. They send you all of the fabric and you can get the finishing fabric and everything. It is wonderful and they send you plenty of fabric. I have a lot of fabric left over, but it is gorgeous. I'm so proud of myself. So that is my first quilt finish. The second quilt project I want to share with you is something that if you watch my old videos and I'm sitting at my desk behind me is a block from a um, another sampler quilt I found that I really love sampler quilts that I started maybe four years ago and then I didn't do anything and I bought the kit from the um, shop that sponsored it and I didn't do anything with it other than that first block. Well, I decided that I was going to get to work and get that done. So that's one of been that has been one of my main focuses in April. And it is in the Primitive Quilts and Projects from 2018. So it was their um, mystery quilt along during that year. And it is. Let me find the picture. The name of it, what was the name of it? I should know the name of it as much as I've been working on it. It's just called Seasonal Mystery Quilt. But this is the final project. So if you watch my old videos, you'll see this one hanging up behind me. And over the past month, I have worked to finish as much of this as possible. And actually, all I need to do is the applique on this corner and then do the sashing and it's ready to go to the quilters. And that's my goal is to get this done in time that when I pick up my other quilt, I can leave this one with her. So let me show you what I have. So it's all folded up here. So this is the one that was hanging up on my craft room wall forever. So there's that. Beautiful. And then this, these two are finished as well. So that's the fall. And then summer. So they're sewn together. And now I'm working on the winter. And all I have left to do is the applique. So here are all the applique pieces, and I just need to add them. Oh, I've done the flower. I just need to do the, the vine and the holly leaves. So that's the last one. Isn't that pretty? And maybe, maybe by my next video, I will have that all together, and I can show you that piece. Now, so I've got, I should be ashamed of myself. I've got these two, the one I finished, the Farm Girl Vintage, or Vintage Farm Girl, Farm Girl Vintage, and then this one. And then uh, I've got Block of the Months coming for 
Farm Gold Vintage 2 and Vintage Christmas. Well, in December, they released the Lori Holtz new Stitch Along, and she did this on her blog. And it is Flea Market, what is it? Flea Market Flower Sew Along. And I know you've seen this because people have been showing the cross stitch version of this. But when I saw that, I just loved that. And I'm like, I am totally doing that. So I went online and I found the full kit. Let me pull out my receipt so I can tell you who I ordered it. I've ordered this from Reb's Fab Stash and they are in Idaho. And I've got the full kit and it came with some of the finishing materials all packaged together. Isn't that beautiful? So it's ready to go. I've been reading the blog post, but as soon as I finish this one, I'm going to start working on this one. So cute. So that has been my stitching, my uh, quilting kind of progress. Okay, so I think that is going to be it. Um, again, thank you for watching this very long, very unorganized um, video. I hope you have a great week, and I hope to see you in seven days. Thanks.